Hey guys, I figured I'd make a quick video showing you uh, the blown track line on the 259. This is the main feed line, either the feed or the return to the track. It's one of the larger lines. The way they put these into the machines, they zip tie them all together. So you're gonna need to get in here, and if you haven't opened your cab up in a while and cleaned it out, you're gonna have a lot of dirt in here, at least on the older D-series before they put those jackets on the exterior. Um, so I, what I did was I just started cleaning out the dirt because I couldn't really see what was going on. I um, cut all the zip ties out of my way. And then on the exterior of the track, you're going to need to remove your little cover that they put there. That does It's supposed to be keeping the dirt out, but it really doesn't. And then the lines just rub on it. Um, so this is the one that split on me. You can see the fluid coming out of it. So that one goes up to the back of the pump. So I may have to undo this front line to get to that rear one. I might try and get a wrench to fit in there, but um, no doubt. I'll probably have to take the whole thing apart to get into it uh, on the exterior here. I'll show you where that plate is. Got to remove the plate right here that covers that. And then you can actually see uh, which line right there that line look how badly chafed that is so if it hadn't split inside the cab underneath in the frame it would have ended up splitting out here at some point so um, people complain about the design of this they did complain they changed it on the newer ones but we're gonna make a quick video so to lift your cab up you'll need 24 millimeter wrench and uh, a drive and you can undo your cab tilt it up and then these are 13 millimeters that hold on that little plate and then you're gonna need an adjustable um, and possibly a few other tools to get these lines off. So I will update you as I go. So there's no good way to get a wrench on that rear line. So you're gonna have to undo this one and the one behind it, and then you can get to the one below. Uh, that's gonna be the only way. The pump is not gonna keep leaking oil. So if you just have some oil absorbency rags, you can just jam those in there. You'll be all good. You don't need to add plugs or um, caps. I just wrapped the lines that I had to disconnect with some absorbency and some electrical tape and um, you'll be all good. Get it out of here. I'm gonna spend a little time cleaning up the inside of this cause it obviously gets super dirty. I had had this open probably like two, 150, 200 hours ago and um, it's already full of dirt again. So. Uh, I'm gonna run down to cat get the line made up and I'll put it back together and on the line here you can see where it split and then it was rubbing on the other side really bad as well so if it hadn't been the front it would have been the back uh, when it blew I was tracking backwards and it actually pushed right up out the seam between the cab I saw it drip down the front I was like okay definitely blue so you know how much pressure runs through those lines um, how much force you know they put out it's pretty crazy I got the new line made up uh, down a cat let's go back to the job uh, it's $270 for this line so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reroute it uh, up back into the cab and then I'll do the connections again and I'll give you guys a little more footage of putting everything back together when you get your new line made up make sure you get some new o-rings here these are the old ones, and then you're going to need a tool like this to pop them out. To connect the new line after you had it like roughly routed, uh, you should be able to hand thread that on pretty much to the point where you just need to turn it a little bit more with a adjustable. And inside the cab, put in the O-ring on that track one. It's kind of a pain in the ass. You really got to just lay on the ground and get your upper body up and inside the track. And same thing with the line. When you reconnect these, start with, for me, it was uh, it was this one that was broken. So if you are replacing the same one, tighten that one up, put your no O-ring in, hand tighten it, and then finish tighten it. And then I would attach, reattach that rear one and then do this front one. Otherwise, there's, there's just not enough space in here to rotate a wrench properly, unless you've made like a custom little tool that fits in between everything. It's just, it's too tight. So that's the order how I would do it. And um, you just gotta make sure you have them in the right positions too. If you have 
like this one on top of that one or whatever vice versa they they're just not they're such thick lines they don't have any flexibility so if something doesn't seem like it's lining up double check how you have everything oriented because you might have something a little fucked up and um it's not going to let you thread these on properly you should be able to just hand tighten these basically to the point where you just need to turn them a little bit more with a wrench uh, you shouldn't be fighting the elbows or anything this is all designed to fit in here properly i wouldn't recommend going to you could get them made up at a local hydraulic shop but if they fuck up the angle or the length at all uh, you're just gonna have a bitch of a time getting it to actually orient itself a cat they like just take the hose from you that's broken they measure it they match it all up they already know what they're doing so what i'm gonna do now is put the cab down run it make sure nothing's leaking and then i'm gonna finish putting everything together and cleaning out the cab and in terms of tools you'll need you're going to need a medium size adjustable you're going to need a tool to take out the old o-rings and then i needed a hammer just to tap the track connection because you don't have a lot of room to rotate down here it's, it's kind of everything's at a little bit of a funny angle you're dealing with the track and you're dealing with the frame so just keep that in mind I ended up taking a little bit of time just to zip tie the lines back so that they're not actually touching the edge of the frame there. And then that side's got a jacket on it. And I tied the lines together up there to get the line protector back on the, the uh, metal cover. You're gonna need to get, I could, you can't get it to go down from here. So what I did was I took it in my hand in that position and I went up and under the machine and you can feed it get up midway up there and then just feel push it up feel feel where you're going with it and then you can kind of set it on the hydraulic lines and then from here it'll be at the top of it'll be like here and then you just pick it up and get it on there I'm trying to go down the package of the lines is just too thick and you don't have the orientation to get past the grease fitting on the back of the track rail so um that's pretty much it check your hydraulic level just take a minute too when you get your cab down the machine started check your hydraulic level there and um, add as you need to you shouldn't have lost too too much depending on how bad the brake was and and then how quick you noticed it um i think the best way to clean the undercarriage out on these is to get them up on some lumber some two by sixes or something and then get under it with like a creeper drop the plates and then all these floor pieces come out in sections and then you could completely get all the debris out of there it's kind of a pain in the ass there's not a lot of room and when you get in there you can crouch and get under the cab and everything but i mean it's kind of a losing battle with the way that these are designed this one's completely clean and you can just see how well you can just see right right inside the cab versus on this side this one i actually isn't that bad either but these just get caked you can see how badly stuff gets stuck in them and then they're full so um but that's how to do it uh, hopefully these tips helped you i know i didn't show every part of how to do it necessarily it's a kind of a dirty job so it was tough to keep my phone going but i hope i gave you some some tips and some help along the way so you can tackle this job without having to send your machine in.